Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to another episode of uh, Friends of Bangladeshi. On this program, we bring a very special person. We invite him because of his activities within the Bangladeshi community or with Bangladesh. And today we have somebody I'm going to introduce very soon. But before that, let's go see a video clip. Brian Summerlad graduated in medicine from Sydney University in Australia. Trained in plastic surgery in the UK, has a special interest in management of children with cleft lip and palate. He is past president of the Craniofacial Society of Great Britain and Ireland, past president of the British Association of Plastic Surgeons, now the British Association of Plastic, Reconstructive and Aesthetic Surgeons. Brian Summerlad is also Honorary Consultant Plastic Surgeon in Great Ormond Street Hospital for Children in London. Brian Summerlad is also Honorary Consultant Plastic Surgeon in Great Ormond Street Hospital for Children in London and the St Andrews Centre at Bromfield Hospital in Chelmsford, Essex. He co-founded the charity Cleft in 2007 with the aims of funding research into the causes and treatment of cleft lip and palate and of supporting cleft teams in several less developed countries. Currently, the main overseas project of CLEFT is to work with colleagues in Bangladesh to develop a comprehensive, multidisciplinary CLEFT and craniofacial centre in Dhaka Medical College Hospital and to help set up similar centres in other centres in Bangladesh such as Silet and Chittagong. We have just seen a video clip about our guest and he is none other than Mr. Brian Samalad. Welcome to our studio. Thank, you very, Thank you very much. Why not? You are a doctor. Well, I am a doctor. I was first a doctor. Your, uh, before uh, your name, yeah. Y yes. Uh, um, but there's a tradition in the UK that uh, you become, you spend six years or five years, you become a doctor, and then you spend another maybe 10 years becoming a surgeon, and then you become a mister again. It's, okay. it's, a, it's an English tradition. English tradition. Uh, in other countries. Because the major majority of the people do not understand the difference yeah. because I'm a mister, because I'm a person yes. and um, you are a doctor, but you are a mister. So people don't understand the difference. Uh, but now I think, you know, you have answered. It's, it's an old uh, British tradition. Old British tradition, but you have to be very, very experienced and you have to be a surgeon, isn't it? Yes, it's, it's surgeons. Yes, so it's, uh, somebody who becomes a, a physician is, st still, is still called doctor. but. It, the tradition is if you become a surgeon, you become mister. Tell us about uh, your activities in Bangladesh. Yes. Uh, well, in the UK yes. for now and then. Okay. What do you do here? I'm a plastic surgeon um, and I've m my major specialty interest is the repair of children with cleft lip and cleft palate. Um, I work uh, in the UK, I've worked for many years at out in Chelmsford mm -hmm. and at Great Ormond Street Children's Hospital in London. Great Ormond Street. Great Ormond Street. That's my special interest. Tell us about uh, the cleft. What is cleft? Mm -hmm. Because um, to me and our viewers, we don't know what cleft is, if you mm -hmm. can explain. Cleft lip and palate is one of the most common congenital um, mm -hmm birth defects um, and it's where the the parts of the f face don't fuse properly so mm -hmm. all of us uh, when we were six weeks after conception mm -hmm. we had our faces were not had not joined up and it's a failure of, of joining up so at about seven weeks the lip should join mm -hmm. but something happens and it doesn't join is it just and lips the, uh, or the palate inside the, the mouth uh, that should close about eight to nine weeks, and again, uh, for some reason, it doesn't. It doesn't close, and that can be because of sometimes genetic reasons, mm -hmm. sometimes environmental reasons, and sometimes we just don't know. But it's it occurs in about one in seven hundred um, babies in the UK. And uh, in do you have any statistics in Bangladesh? We don't. It's very difficult to collect okay. those sort of yeah. figures in Bangladesh, but probably, I suspect, more common. So it's kind of abnormality. It's, yes, it's, a, it's, a, it's one of the common congenital 
birth yeah. defects. So we see many people here and there, they've got broken lips and cut here, there, and some of them are operated. Um, but um, do they have any speaking when they speak, any difficulty? Oh yes, if they don't, uh, if, the palate, if, they have, if the palate is cleft, if the palate is not yeah. joined, then babies have great difficulty feeding. Mm -hmm. And in many countries they don't survive. They, they, they just don't feed. They, they can't, they so can't right. flourish. Sad. Um, and if they survive, they will not be able to speak normally no. with, a, with an open cleft. So mm -hmm. it's, it's not just cosmetic. It's very much about uh, function um, and particularly speech and communication. So what is your involvement with Cleft Foundation? I'm currently the chairman. I was one of the founders of this charity and uh, it's based in the UK. It's quite a small charity, but mm -hmm. it, it does two things. It funds research into the causes and the treatment of cleft lip and palate, research that's been carried out at Great Ormond Street and with our colleagues, mm -hmm. uh, but also it, it supports cleft teams in several countries in the past, we've been involved in Sri Lanka and Egypt and Uganda, but currently our big project is, is Bangladesh. We, we, that's what we're putting a huge amount of our mm -hmm. effort into. Because so it is, it is a big project in Bangladesh. The, the Bangladesh project's mm -hmm. a big project. Big project. It's, it's our biggest project by far. Okay. How did you get associated with this project? I was invited to Bangladesh about 18 years ago mm -hmm. to come and begin to teach about or to try to improve the standards of, of cleft lip and palate surgery mm -hmm. and I've been going there for 18 years but 18 years. up until recently there hasn't been the right sort of environment to really develop a, a local project mm -hmm. um, but in the last three or four years things have greatly improved. So improved. It, it, it was the right time and the right place mm -hmm. to set up the first multidisciplinary team Center at in Dhaka Medical College yeah, Hospital. I'll come to that. You went about eighteen years ago first. Yeah. When you first went, what did you do? Uh, I used to work with local surgeons uh, mm -hmm. and uh, help them, and I think perhaps help them to improve their techniques. Um, mainly Train them? in training them. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, training them and mm -hmm. and doing a lot of operating myself mainly in, in private hospitals, because that's where the, the work was being done. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes with, with NGOs, um, with the support of NGOs. The problem with those projects is that they didn't create anything for the long term. Long -term. They, they, didn't, uh, they didn't really teach um, other... But now you are. That's the idea of what we're now mm -hmm. doing. It's, uh, so. The other problem in Bangladesh is that there's really been no ongoing care. So it's not just a question mm -hmm. of repairing a baby uh, at three, six months, mm -hmm. but it's also looking after that child with speech therapy if necessary, looking after the teeth, doing a bone graft, to mm -hmm. putting some bone in the gap in the gum at the right age, and so on. Orthodontic treatment to straighten the teeth. So it's a, it's a long-term management. Ongoing thing. Ongoing up to maturity and that's not been available in, in Bangladesh at all but uh, until now. now. This is what we're, well, you said until that's, now. What, that's what we're in the process mm. of creating, yes. So okay. we've appointed so a speech therapist, we've appointed an orthodontist, we've appointed nurses and uh, anaesthetists. So the idea is that we, ha we, we will have a, a training center where these, where patients can be treated from birth to maturity but also where they're surgeons, nurses, speech therapists, orthodontists can be trained and hopefully go out to other uh, centres in Bangladesh to do so the same thing. How is it happening and where? Dhaka Medical College Hospital. Mm -hmm. It's actually the, it's now called the Sheikh Hasina National Institute for Burns and Plastic Surgery. Okay. So okay. we felt that that was the right place to, to build the first centre. We are looking at doing something very similar in Silet. You said b burns and um, cleft Burns and unit. plastic surgery, yeah. Okay. Is it combined together or is it separated? It will be, it is a, a, a department within that, that 
uh, Institute. Okay. It, it, but it's not the same thing, is it? Because burn is something different. Cleft, to, no. Clefts no? are part of plastic surgery. So mm -hmm. it's the burns and plastic surgery uh, unit. Okay. So it's, uh, they, they deal with other sorts of plastic surgery. They, they deal with, with accidents and cancers, mm -hmm. and, um, but also birth defects like cleft lip and palate. So, so the that's part Dhaka of... Dhaka Medical College Hospital is a government yes. hospital. It's the main, yes, teaching So you have connection with the government, haven't you? Yes, the, yes. Uh, we, we do. And um, the institute, the Cleft Institute now has official government recognition. Okay. Excellent. Um, That's good. And they are building just around the corner from the current uh, institute. So currently the institute is 100 bedded. Okay. okay. Usually 400 patients in 100 beds. Oh, my God. Every corridor is full of, full of patients. Full of patients. They're just building, just a little way around the corner, a 400-bedded burns and plastic That's surgery. That's good news. Sheikh Hasina National Institute of Burns and Plastic Surgery. And within that, there will be a, uh, a cleft and craniofacial center. Mm -hmm. So when that's built, which is supposed to be next year, it'll be finished, then everybody will, what we have created in the old building, will move across to a new floor in the, in the new building, with a clinic for the patients, uh, an orthodontic clinic, dental surgery, a speech therapy room, an operating theatre ward. Is it up to the standard, would you say? Not yet, but that's what we're trying, that's what we're working towards. It's, mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, and so a, a, a lot of what we're doing is, is, is teaching and training okay. by going out there and working with the the, the, the surgeons doctors. and the speech therapists and so on, and also getting them to come over to the UK. So last UK. year we had six, we had uh, th uh, three surgeons, four surgeons and an anaesthetist uh, and a speech therapist came and spent one month in Great Ormond Street Hospital. This year we've just had another anaesthetist and a nurse and the orthodontist. They've just spent a month. Um, the, the Emirates uh, Airline Foundation have very kindly mm -hmm. donated their fares. I was going to ask you and, that. Uh, and then our charity pays for their accommodation and so mm -hmm. on, and the hospital have been very supportive. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a two-way communication. Okay. And in January, I'm going out again with another big team to run a workshop and to teach and train. Mm -hmm. um, how is it financed? You said about Emirates. <coughs> Emirates, how do Emirates they, have they, kindly given us airfares, okay. uh, both for the Bangladeshis that have come over to the UK and for, uh, for us, for some of our team to go out to, uh, to Bangladesh. I personally fund myself, but, uh, okay. but the, some of the team have paid for by, uh, by the Emirates. Um, and um, so the, the, the government uh, have a funding the new building. Okay. They are, we understand they're going to help to equip, to buy some expensive equipment. Okay. Uh, maybe a new operating microscope for doing pallet repairs, for mm -hmm. example. Until now, we, our charity has done most of the, mm -hmm. the fundraising. We'll continue our discussion uh, after a break. Let's go for a break, stay with us, thank you. Welcome back. Today on the Friends of Bangladeshi program, we have a very special person, Mr. Brian Samarlad. Mr. Samarlad, we were talking about funding and so on. Please continue. Until now, uh, most of the funds have been provided by our charity, mm -hmm. but the government is now getting behind, and that's what we always hoped would happen. So the government of Bangladesh. The government of Bangladesh, okay. yes. At the moment, we are, f we are paying the salaries of uh, a surgeon, of two anaesthetists, a speech therapist, um, an orthodontist, um, nurse, nurses, and so on. Uh, we hope that the government will take over that funding in the future. They're also, as I explained, building this very huge, it'll be the biggest burns and plastic surgery unit in the world. In the world? I think so. For, I don't think there's any other 400 that bedded is. burns and plastic surgery unit anywhere in the world that I know of. That's good and, news for us. <laughs> yeah. um, so they are building that. The army's building it. 
army, yes. And yes. it's going up very quickly. It's very mm -hmm. impressive. Uh, and there will, because we've created this team in the older hospital, it's not that old, it's mm -hmm. about 10 years old, because it's created, it will move across into the, into the new building. Um, so we're just setting it up at the right time. Okay. When you bring surgeons to the UK for training, mm. which hospital are they trained in? Primarily Greater Ormond Street uh, Hospital for Children. That's one of the best in the country, isn't it? <laughs> well, we Greater think so. Yeah. Yes. So how long do they stay? For one month. One uh, month. They're, they're not able to operate because mm. of, you know, it's just too difficult to get permission. So they're observing, they go to the clinics, they spend time in the operating theatre. Um, a month is good. And how often do you visit Bangladesh? I, I go currently twice a year. Twice a year. Um, I, will be, I was there in August. I'm going there again in January. How long do you stay uh, each time? Uh, usually about two weeks. Okay. Sometimes a little less. The Cleft Foundation, which works in conjunction with Dhaka Medical College Hospital, yep. are there any uh, prospect of having similar centres in Bangladesh? Because end of the day, the population is 160 yes, to sure. 70 million sure. people. Well, I think, so the answer to that is yes. Um, and as I said, we in, in earlier this year, I went to Salette with um, some colleagues and we, we talked with the team there. And I'm, I'm sure it's going to be possible to set up a similar uh, centre there in Osmani Medical College Hospital. College Hospital, yes. Um, we're also going to Chittagong in January mm -hmm. uh, to look at the possibilities there. It's got to be the right time and the right place. Yes. You've got to have the right manpower there. Yes. Uh, and I think in both those places we do have that manpower. Uh -huh. We need some more facilities. We need some more beds and, uh, and, and probably some more surgeons also. Mm -hmm. So I think we will help other centres in two ways. We'll hopefully physically help them to set up centres in, let's say, Salette, mm -hmm. but also by training people in Dhaka, they can, they, we will train people who can then go to Salette, go to Salette uh, and, and Chittagong, Chittagong and so on to, mm -hmm. to, to work. Mm -hmm. So we hope that by developing this centre in, in Dhaka, it will also help to help. improve the standard elsewhere. Yeah. Do you have any hospital in UK apart from Great Ormond Street, you know, helping in this project? Not at the moment. Uh, I mean, the, the plus the our charity is really linked with Great Ormond Street mm -hmm. and with the St Andrews Centre in Broomfield Hospital in Chelmsford. So that's uh, uh, we have uh, in the UK we're a local charity, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, so that's why our major UK in involvement has been with those hospitals. Do you get any involvement by the British Bangladeshi community or support? Some. I've, I've been to Friends of Bangladesh meetings and, mm. uh, and I've been interviewed by your channel in the past and mm. they've been very, very helpful. I think mm. they broadcast a, a brief uh, extract of what we're doing. But I think probably the, the British Bangladeshi community do not know very much about very it. Much. We'll uh, try to help. So your charity, it is a UK registered charity. You are the chairman. How many trustees do you have? Uh, we have, uh, I think, currently 10 mm -hmm. trustees. The charity is called CLEFT. Um, in, we, it's capitals, the, it's um, written as capitals. And then it's called Bridging the Gap. CLEFT Bridging the Gap. And the Bridging the Gap is, refers to actually closing the gap in the, in the yes. baby's lip. It also, bridging the gap between what we don't know and what we want to know. So in other words, the knowledge gap, research gap, and it's bridging the gap between what is available in the UK and what is available in countries mm -hmm. like Bangladesh. Uh, so, in three so ways, we are UK trying charity, to bridge the gap. As a UK charity, w when you work in Bangladesh, what are the are there any struggles or difficulties you face? We tried to we we, we gave a microscope okay. uh, to the to the centre, and it took maybe six months to get official approval to get it through customs and get it shipped to the hospital. That's sort of, those sort of difficulties. Mm -hmm. I think from the Bangladeshi government, a lot of support. The, the UK government and, and, and DFID, Department of Foreign International Development, have their own projects in Bangladesh. So mm -hmm. this doesn't quite fit in their, 
in their uh, within their remit. Mm -hmm. But uh, we've we've had some some involvement with them also. So hopefully, if the army is building the building, that's the good news. Yeah. The building itself is going to be 400 bedded mm. hospital. Yeah. And it is going to be the biggest in the world. I think so. And the government is directly involved. Yes. Tell us about your future plans for Bangladesh, like, you know, three year, five year plans. Well, we had, we're coming towards the end of, our, of a three year plan for DMCH, for, for mm. Dhaka. Dhaka. Uh, not that we've finished, but, you know, we've got to a certain stage where we've got a, 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 the nucleus of a team and a, we've got, we now have a ward. So when we started, there was an empty operating theatre. Uh, there was no ward. We now have a ward designated for the cleft children, children with clefts. We have a special operating theatre. We have an orthodont orthodontic department. We have a speech therapy uh, room. Um, and it's a question of just developing that, of, of, of increasing the activity of the centre. And then, as I said in the the next stage will be to try to replicate that in other, other, in other places. Yeah. You said about overcrowding. The patients are in the corridor and mm. at a time, how, how many patients would you get? You know, or do you have to turn away patients? We try not to turn away patients mm -hmm. uh, and, and we, we make sure that the, the treatment is completely free for them. Um, we, we will never deal with the total number of patients in Bangladesh. There are you cannot maybe six thousand per year, something like yeah. that. But as I said before, m m most of them now are being dealt with by NGOs who sort of fly in and do the ca operations mm -hmm. and fly out. And what we really, what needs to happen is this ongoing care from birth to maturity. On a permanent basis. So we hope that by showing that it's a lot more than just doing a few, putting a uh, doing a few operations on some small mm -hmm. babies that. It's, it's, a, it's a lifelong um, treatment regime. We hope that by showing, by teaching that, by showing um, surgeons and other specialists that we will raise that standard throughout the country. Mm -hmm. So um, in the past, I heard myself that there would be a team coming from Canada yep. to do operations on patients. Yep. But yours is unique, yeah? Because th it's going to be in a building, it's an ongoing process, yeah. yes? Yes, mm -hmm. I, I think uh, there is this tradition of what are called missions, mm. um, where surgeons from the West go and spend a week or two weeks in some country such as Bangladesh, and sometimes they're not very experienced surgeons. No. They, uh, but, because, but you train them? Because, no, I mean the ones that come from... Other parts, uh, United States or UK uh -huh. or wherever, uh, uh, and sometimes they, uh, they're surgeons who don't have a lot of experience in their own country, but they go out and they operate. Uh, they increase their own experience, but they don't teach. They don't leave anything behind, mm -hmm. except problems sometimes when they mm -hmm. when they return. Uh, so we're trying to do something that's much more about building uh, sustainability, yeah. producing something from the from the bottom up bottom that will to the that top will top. that will remain yeah. until it is cured yeah so the changes are that yours is a permanent uh, sort of structure structure yeah, patients are treated and they are supported mm. afterwards yes and the difference is visiting teams from different countries they come and operate and then they leave with problems Yes. Yeah, of course, some of them are good surgeons and some of them do good work. Uh -huh. I'm not saying that it's all bad at all, uh -huh. but it doesn't produce something for the long term. So and the other, the other uh, project, which is very big in, in Bangladesh, is a, a charity which pays a s surgeons to do the, surg the surgery. Yeah. So they pay X amount, two, $250 or something like that per, per operation. Uh -huh. And some of those are fine, but again, it doesn't... It just churns out lots of operations and, on babies, but it doesn't produce anything that, that, that mm -hmm. remains. Do you find, when you are there, communication is a problem? I mean, language barriers? F well, I, I wish I could speak Bangla. Um, mm -hmm. I'm very bad at languages, any languages. Uh, of uh, w it's fine talking to the, to the colleagues. They're, 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 they speak English. 
And if it's a question of communicating with patients, then they do that. Have you noticed any changes since you first went to Bangladesh? I mean, communication-wise, uh, travel-wise, you know, technology-wise, yeah. you know, any improvement? I, I have to say that I think travel has become worse. It's become more difficult because traffic has increased traffic. so much. Uh, traffic in uh, Dhaka. Dhaka is a, is a, a, a big problem of traffic and pollution. Um, obviously, you can, big, see, yeah. you can see there is development, of course. You know, there are more big buildings. Mm -hmm. There are more... Uh, I think at the, at, the, uh, at the top end of society, there's obviously been development, but there's mm -hmm. still a huge amount of poverty. To do, yes. Mm -hmm. When you get there, food-wise, what do you have? Do you have uh, curries? Do you have... Yeah, I have curries, yeah. I, I'm, uh, do you like curry? I, I like curry. I don't like, I wouldn't eat as much curry and as frequently as, uh, I, I as, as, as most Bangladeshis and do. Do you think uh, Bangladeshi people are hospitable? Oh yes, I, I, I like going there very much. They mm. are um, uh, very kind people. Uh, I always feel very welcome. I feel a bit of an honorary Bangladeshi when I'm there. You know, we have learned a lot from you today. This is a unique project. And congratulations to you. Keep on the hard work and uh, the love for the country. And I'm sure the community, British Bangladeshi community, will be supportive. We have been speaking to Mr. Samarlad, Brian Samarlad. He's a very special person, very a specialist doctor. He's a mister. And he visits Bangladesh regularly. And he has been dealing with the problem of cleft, which many of us uh, do not know about. It's been a pleasure to have you in our studios today. We look forward to seeing you again. And viewers, we'll see you again soon. Stay tuned with Channel S. Thank you.